is the Bulldogs versus the Eels. The Bulldogs were last week's surprise package. They get got up over the Knights in horrible conditions. I mean, who would want to be a player in, those, in that kind of weather? It was not pleasant viewing or, or pleasant experience on any part. But the, the Dogs do welcome Tim Laffey. He comes into the centres. Uh, Cogger goes to the bench for Wakeham. I mean, the dogs coming up against an Eels side, the only two changes for them, and that is Evans and Kafusi coming into the bench, uh, Takarangi and Yutokamanu both dropping out of the side. I mean, the, the depth there to, to swap out two very good forwards, what well, one forward and utility for another two very good forwards, it's, it's pretty bleak for the Bulldogs because, I mean, you look at their starting pack, and you think you know what it's it could be it could be close because there's a lot of physicality in both packs. Then you go to the bench. I mean, Davy's shown how versatile he is. He's got a great offload on him. Creates a lot of second phase play, which the Eels love to go off. Uh, near Corey, just a tough ball runner. Evans again loves to get the arm free. Uh, Kafusi just a. a just another tough fall to come up against. It's it's pretty bleak for the Bulldogs, to be honest. Mate, anyone would have thought that I'd converted you into a Parramatta fan with how you're hyping them up. <laughs> um, I oh, I tell you what, match up of the round: Lukey Thompson v Nathan Brown. Get some of that into me. Oh, it makes the mouth salivate. One of them are going to be on report at the end of the week. I'll promise you that. If anyone offers a betting market on that, I'll put a hundred on it. Um, yeah, look, it is the dogs always show up from Parramatta. There's no two wits about it. We saw at the start of the season the dogs were expected to get thumped, they only lost eight to two. Uh, they upset them last year, 12 to six, towards the back end of the season. Uh, it's yeah, it's always a tough one to pick, surprisingly, despite what it, it may look like. Um, I an immediate one that stands out for me in terms of a matchup: Michael Jennings against Jake Avarillo. If the numbers do line up as predicted, Avarillo has been fantastic in defence, but has that tendency to come up. He's not a natural centre. He comes up, he jams in. Eight times out of ten, it works. But there's those couple of times where he leaves his winger floating away, and you can't have Mike Acevo going one on one against Marcelo Montoya because nine times out of ten. It's going to be Micah, who just rolls over the top. In terms of betting odds, I can't recommend Micah as an anytime try scorer at $1.12. It's too short. I am going to go against my initial thought of giving a couple of cheeky ones um, and say for value, I'm going to go with Mitch Moses at three seventy five. As a cheeky shout, I think he'll go back-to-back this week. Uh, it's going to be one of the two Parramatta halves at score. Because I've tipped Moses, it's probably going to be Brown. But <laughs> it's always how it works. It's, it's the same with the dogs. If I choose the one, if I go the hot wings, the seven wins it. If I go the eight, the one wins it. So, yeah, I can't, I can't seemingly pick one there. But Moses, I think, is going to be in a good bit of form. Comes up against a dog side that tends to allow halves to get through. Um, I also want to harp on the fact that in the last five games, the second half for between these two has been the uh, best half. So as I try and look at the market for there, if I can find it, I can't find it right now. But when I get that, I'll have the odds there. But Mitch Moses at 375 and the second half as the highest scoring half is what I'm going with. So you've you've stolen you've stolen my second half tip. You've you've done it again. You did it to me last week with the with the storm. But um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go the same thing. But I'm gonna go Ferguson as the only time try scorer. And um, I just think that after last week, he'll be he'll be desperate for one uh, being denied so close. It's I I can see him getting over. I mean, he lines up against. We'll send his Lesniak, who 
has a, a new centre pairing. You've seen a lot of the times when you get a new wing centre pairing, there's not been that time to adjust to each other. One will shoot the line, the other has to come with, and I think it just creates enough space outside for Blake to get an arm free and put Ferguson over into the corner. Or alternatively, just a nice little cut-out ball for Ferguson to get over into the corner as they jam inwards. But, yeah, I, I, this one's going to be a, a second-half ice score in Ferguson any time for me. It, just, it seems it's on. We'll move on to the next one. 